Embarking on the journey of purchasing a home can be a roller coaster filled with ups and downs, of both excitement and a touch of anxiety. It's a significant milestone, likely the largest financial decision you'll ever make. I always say the best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. So if you're here to learn, I think you're on the right track. So I'm eager to share with you the 10 most important steps in buying a home that will allow you to have a smooth experience from start to finish. So grab a notebook and a drink as I go over the steps you can expect from start to finish of buying a home. Oh yeah, and as a reminder, my name is Matt Sloan and I'm a realtor here in the greater Toronto area. And if I could ask a huge favor, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would mean a lot. And I'm working to grow my YouTube channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Now, let's get into where to start when planning on buying your next home. Planning your finances. Preparing your finances is a crucial first step in the home buying process. This involves three key aspects, savings, income, and credit score. For savings, you need to accumulate funds to cover the down payment and the closing costs, which can vary widely depending on the type of loan you choose. To simplify it for now, you need 5% of the purchasing price up to 500,000. So 25,000 if you're purchasing a 500K home. Any amount above 500,000, you need an additional 10% of that amount. So for a property of 800,000, you would need 25,000 for the first 500 and 30K for the additional 300,000 above 500. This works all the way up to a million dollars, which then you will need a 20% down payment. So a $1 million home, you'll need 200K down payment. If you'd like me to go over this further, there's a link in my description below where you can book a call with me at a time that works best for you. For income and purchasing power, you can get a rough idea of what you can be approved for by multiplying your household income by three to four times, depending on the lender and the property. This will give you a start of what type of home you can be on the lookout for. So it is important to be able to show that steady income to be able to get the most out of your pre-approval. The more you can save, the better your financial situation will be as it can affect the loan approval and the terms. When considering your credit score, it is best to have as high, of, as, high as a credit score as possible to get the best rates. You wanna make sure you at least have above a 620 score and being over 700 will help with saving on that interest. The next step would be getting pre-approved for a loan. Now, these next couple steps can interchange depending on your situation. But I always believe one of the first steps should be getting pre-approved. It is a critical step in the buying home buying process. It gives you a clear idea of how much you can afford and shows the sellers that you are a serious and qualified buyer. Pre-approval involves submitting financial documents to the lender, who then evaluates your financial health to determine how much they are willing to lend. This process typically requires providing pay stubs, tax returns, and bank statements. Lenders will also perform a credit check to get, accurate loan, to get an accurate loan offer. It's advisable to consult with multiple lenders to compare interest rates, fees, and loan terms. Remember, each lender may offer different rates and conditions, so shopping around is key to finding the best deal. Working with a mortgage broker can also be beneficial as they can match you with lenders suited to your financial situation. During this process, it's essential to understand the various components of a mortgage, including interest rates, term lengths, and whether the fixed rate is fixed or variable. Getting pre-approved sets the stage for a focused and realistic home search within your budget. Next up, hire a realtor. Engaging a realtor is an important step to buying a home. A buyer's agent spe uh, specifically represents your interests and opposed to the seller's agent who looks after the seller's interests. It's a common misconception that hiring a realtor incurs extra costs for the buyer. In most cases, the seller pays the realtor's commission. It's important to choose a realtor who has expertise in working with home buyers and is knowledgeable about the local market trends and available home buyer programs. Your realtor can provide invaluable advice and guidance throughout the process, from finding homes that meet your criteria to no negotiating the best deal possible. 
They also handle the complexities of the transaction, ensuring that you're well informed about the terms and conditions of the sale. A good realtor can make the difference between a smooth, successful home buying experience and a stressful one. When selecting a realtor, look for someone who communicates well, understands your needs, and has a proven track record of successful home purchases. Personal referrals, online reviews, and interviews can help you find the right fit. Remember, a realtor is your advocate in the process and should be someone you trust and feel comfortable working with. Next would be start the house hunting process. House hunting is the often most exciting part of the home buying process. Before diving in, it's crucial to create a list of needs, must-haves, and wants, nice-to-haves. Consider factors like location, size type, and home, like single family, condo, townhouse, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, outdoor space, and any special requirements that you may need. This list helps narrow down the choices and keeping the search focused. It's easy to get distracted by other features that may be outside your budget or not meet your essential needs. When viewing properties, take notes and photos to help remember the details. Something I learned from another realtor that I love using with my clients is after viewing the property, rate the home one through 10, but you can't pick seven. Anything below seven, we move on. If it's an eight or a nine, we discuss further about what changes would need to be a 10. Because the truth is, no home is ever a 10 before you put your own personal touch on it. Your realtor plays a key role in this step by recommending properties, setting up viewings, and providing insights into the local real estate market. They can also alert you to new listings that meet your criteria as soon as they come up on the market. Keep in mind, the long-term aspects of the property, resale value, neighborhood growth, and changes in your life circumstances. During viewings, look beyond the aesthetics and consider the condition of the home, potential repairs and res renovations. Trust your instincts and don't rush into a decision, but also be prepared to act quickly in a competitive market. Next would be making an offer. So you found your home and you're ready to make an offer. Making an offer is a critical stage where strategic thinking and timely action are key. Once you find that home that meets your criteria, work with a realtor to draft an offer. This includes not only the price you're willing to pay, but also the terms, such as conditions like a home inspection or financing, the closing date and any inclusions. The other key part of the offer is the deposit. The deposit is typically 5% of purchase price, but that amount can be negotiated in some circumstances. The deposit amount is due within 24 hours of an accepted offer and a bank draft must be submitted to the listing brokerage. Don't worry though, this amount does eventually tie down, tie into your down payment, but it's important to note that you need that 5% deposit accessible before making an offer. Next, your realtor will provide guidance on a competitive offer price based on comparable homes sold in that area and current market conditions. It's important to balance being competitive with staying within your budget. Your offer can be accepted, rejected, or countered by the seller. If countered, this initiates a negotiation phase where you can agree to make another counter offer or walk away. Be prepared for some back and forth negotiation. It's crucial to understand your limits and to be clear what you're willing to compromise. Remember, an offer is legally binding once accepted. So ensure all terms are clearly stated and understood. In a competitive market, you might have to act swiftly to make an offer, but avoid rushing into decisions without careful consideration. Your realtor's experience is invaluable in this step, providing insight into the negotiation tactics and helping you navigate through an agreement. In a multiple offer situation, it is important not to get too emotional and stick to a game plan that is set out before. In those situations, I like to discuss a price that we are comfortable with when competing against only one other offer, a price when there are three or four plus offers, and a price that is not stopping you from getting this home. I don't always recommend that one, but it's up to you. <laughs> if, the, if your offer is accepted with conditions, you then have the 
conditional period. So the conditional period is your opportunity to thoroughly inspect the property and ensure it's a sound investment. This period typically lasting from three to five business days allows you to conduct inspections and assess the home's condition. The general home inspection is the most common where an inspector examines the property from the foundation to the roof, identifying any potential issues or repairs needed. This is also the time to finalize your home insurance and ensure it covers all necessary aspects of the property. If significant issues are uncovered during the inspections, you can negotiate with the seller to address these concerns, whether through repairs in the change or in the purchase price. It's a, cri it's a critical phase where you can walk away from the deal if the inspections reveal deal-breaking problems, assu assuming your offer included an inspection condition. Your realtor can guide you in interpreting inspection reports and negotiating any necessary repairs or concessions. The conditional period is not about just identifying the problems, but also understanding the maintenance and upkeep of the property that will be required, ensuring you're fully prepared for home ownership. During this time, it also allows for financing from your lender to be confirmed, as long as there is a financing condition. Typically, you are pre-approved for a certain amount, and then once an offer is placed, the lender will then confirm financing for that specific property. This leads me to the appraisal. So the appraisal is a critical step in the mortgage process where an independent appraiser evaluates the home's value. Ordered by the lender, the, appraiser, the appraisal ensures the loan's amount does not exceed the home's worth. The appraiser assesses the home based on factors like location, size, condition, and comparable home sales in the area. There are three possible outcomes. The appraisal matches the purchase price, comes in higher, or is lower. If the, if the appraisal matches the or exceeds the purchase price, the loan process continues smoothly. However, if the appraisal is lower than the purchase price, it can, be, it can complicate the transaction. In such cases, you can renegotiate the sale price with the seller, pay the difference out of pocket, or in some cases, challenge the appraisal. The appraisal is also important for setting property taxes and can be a negotiation tool in the buying process. It's important to understand that the appraised value is an expert's best estimate of the home's value at that time and may not reflect future market changes. Your realtor can help you understand the appraisal report and advise on the best course of action. Next up, we have buyer revisits. Typically, I like to insert two or three revisits for the buyer to go back and view the home for an hour before closing. For the visits, I suggest making the first one for any family and or contractors to come through and see the home, as well as any measurements that need to be taken for planning, furniture, etc. Depending on the scope of work or renovating that needs to be done, this can be stretched over two separate visits if needed. For the final walkthrough, typically conducted two or three days before closing, is the buyer's last opportunity to inspect the property. This step ensures that the home's condition has not changed since the last viewing and that all negotiated, no, negotiated repairs or improvements have been satisfied. Buyers should meticulously check the house, ensuring that all fixtures, appliances, and systems are operational and that the property is in agreed upon condition. This step is also a chance to verify that no new issues have emerged since the home inspection. It's not just about repairs, it's about confirming that the property's condition matches what was agreed upon in the contract. If problems are found, the buyer can request delays in closing or negotiations for resolution. Getting the keys, the exciting time. <laughs> the day has finally come Closing day is here and you are about to get the keys. But when does that typically happen? At this point, it is in the lawyer's hands to transfer the funds and switch title. Usually, you will be on the edge of your seat awaiting the call from the lawyer in the late afternoon. Once you get the call, you will either meet at the lawyer's office to get the keys 
or receive a lockbox code where you can then go to the property and get the keys from the lockbox to your new home. It's an exciting time, so enjoy it before the fun of moving boxes and setting up your new home takes over your weekends. <laughs> I hope this gave you a clear picture on what to expect when beginning your home search for a new home. If you have any further questions, remember, you can always go to the link in the description below and book a call with me at a time that works for you. Oh yeah, and if you like the kind of content and information in this video, please subscribe to the channel and comment down below. See you in the next one.